so many. Let me just say sorry to them and start. Okay. No, no, no. We are all confused. There's something wrong. I goofed up. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will. Okay, bye. Hi, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Hi everyone. I'm so sorry. I there was some confusion with the time zone. So I I was under the impression it starts at 11 a.m. India time. So there's a little confusion and uh, sorry for the late start. Okay, um, I've got quite a few people. So is it all right if we do the session now? So just give me two minutes while I just get everything in place. Just bear with me. I'm really, really sorry. Just two minutes, guys. Can you see my screen? You can see my screen, perfect. I just need to sign into the OEP network. Okay, ready to start? Let me just look once at the chat box. Perfect. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. And I'm really, really sorry about the confusion because in my calendar, it was showing me 11 a.m. my time, India time. So I think there's a little confusion with the time zone. 
uh, anyway, I'm really sorry and uh, welcome to the session on research basics with citation. And uh, let's see what we will be covering in this session today. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Sumita. I work for Oxford University Press as a trainer and I look after training for South Asia and Southeast Asia. Today we will be talking, I will give you an introduction to Oxford University Press and to the platform Oxford Scholarship Online through which we will move on to our main topic of the day, which is citations. Then we will talk about what a citation is, why do you need to cite, the different kinds of citation styles and um, how the citation management tools can make citation easier for you. So this is an introduction. This is the University of Oxford, headquartered in Oxford, United Kingdom. It is the oldest and largest university in the English speaking world. We, being the uh, oldest uh, univer uh, university press in this uh, educational fraternity, we, our primary objective is to see that we are able to excel in research, scholarship, and education. And how do we do that? We have about 43 online products. We've got law, we've got journals, we've got, uh, we've got law, we've got journals, we've got eBooks, we've got medicine, we've got art, we've got music, we've got um, bibliographies, encyclopedias, dictionaries, references, handbooks, you name it, we pretty much have it. So this is just a little brief of what I've already said. We have a presence in about 51 countries and which means any part of the globe you go to, you will find an OEP presence there. We publish approximately 7,000 new books and 370 journals in a year. These are some of our coveted products. These names I've already taken, I've already told you about them. So here we are. Let's go to the platform and talk about Oxford Scholarship Online. Let me just show you the platform. This is Oxford Scholarship Online. The URL to access this platform is oxford.universitypress.com. Now, what is Oxford Scholarship Online? It is actually a collection of ebooks. It's a collection of pure academic monographic content published by only Oxford University Press. And you see, this is OSO in numbers. We have 19,000 plus books on this platform. We have 27 subject modules. 370 plus subdisciplines, and we have contributions from 19,000 plus authors. This is updated 12 times a year, which means every time there's a new edition, before the hard copy is out, it's already there available for you online. On the right hand side of the page, you will see this tab called Complete Title List. If you click on this, it will give you an Excel spreadsheet of all the titles available. You can download the sheet and you can filter by subject, by author, by name of the book, whichever way you want, and look and see if the book you want is already there or not. Then there is a news feed column here. And if you need to check on more of the news in detail, there's a tab at the top. And month-wise, you would get all the data of all the news that is being updated here. And mostly the news is about the number of books that have been published in this month, etc., etc. Let's go back to the main page. At the center of the page, you will find a featured book of the month. Every month, there is a new book here. If you wish to find out a little more about us, just click on the About tab here. So here we are. 
there's a little video on uh, Oxford Scholarship Online. If you forget what I'm training you on, there is a take a tour tab at the top. If you click on take a tour, you will get this presentation as a PowerPoint, as a PDF, and as a video recording. Back to the main page. So there are three ways you can browse. The easiest is by doing a quick search. The second is by doing a subject-wise search. How many subject areas does it cover? 27 subject modules. And the third one is by doing an advanced search. The easiest way is always to do a quick search. Now, before we move on to a quick search, let me just give you a little heads up. Do you see there are two radio buttons here? One says all partner presses. The other one says Oxford Scholarship Online. Oxford Scholarship Online has books published only by Oxford University Press, and it covers 27 subject modules. But by default, you have all partner presses always selected. When we talk about all partner presses, let me just give you a brief background. When we saw that, you know, the success of this platform, when we saw that uh, people loved this platform and they were using it, we decided to partner with other partner presses, with other university presses, and uh, create another platform which became University Press Scholarship Online. And if you take a look here, you will see the names of all the uh, university presses we partner with. And there are some very interesting ones. You've got Liverpool University Press, Edinburgh University Press, uh, Stanford University Press, Yale, Manchester, quite a few interesting ones. So now when you want to do a quick search, if you do a quick search on, let's say, cybersecurity, let's choose cybersecurity, and this is checked by default, it will automatically take you to the University Press Scholarship page. Here we are. So if you look here, it tells us there are 17 books for cybersecurity. Your first way of filter should always be recent to old. That's the first filter you should do. Then what you should do is generally click on unlocked, which means what you have access to. But because I'm logged in with the Oxford University Press credentials, I will have access to everything. So I'm leaving this filter. And then you can choose which university press you're interested in or move on to subject. So let's look at cybersecurity related to society and culture. Let's click on this. There are two books here. Let's open the first one. When you open this book, You get the bibliographic, you get the abstract, which is a summary of the book, and you get the bibliographic information. It tells you the date it was first published, with which university press it was published online and when. Gives you the print ISBN number, and it also gives you the DOI number. So what is the DOI number? The DOI is the digital object identifier. Why is it important? It is a permanent reference number. It will never change. And how is it important? Because uh, 
let's say there's so much research happening around coronavirus. After 20 years, you have a sibling in the family who is doing his research on, psych uh, on uh, coronavirus. Is it humanly possible for someone to read so many articles? So if the lecturer gives him the DOI and tells him that, look, these are, this is the article, these are the different articles I want you to refer to, it will be easy for, for him to pull up the relevant ones. So it is of great use to the lecturers, to the students, and to the librarians. Now let's look here. When you open this page, you will have an option called Find in Library. Now for me, find in library, it takes me to the Oxford library here. So here it's telling me that it is available in this particular university press. So if your university has this book, it will automatically tell you whether it is there in your library or not. The second is find in WorldCat. What is WorldCat? WorldCat is a huge initiative of books, of libraries. So in WorldCat, it will tell you where this book is available closest to you. So here, see, if I've entered location Malaysia and I'm doing fine libraries, it will show me which are the libraries closest to me that has, have this book. And unfortunately, we don't have anything so close the closest we have is this. This book in hard copy is available only here. And then you have Google Preview. Google Preview gives you a little write-up on the book. It tells you what it's all about. And if you're interested, you can always buy this book. You know, you can get this book in print. Can view the ebook. So basically, you'll only get the preview of the book. You won't get the whole book. And if you really like the book, you'll be able to buy it. Okay, this is pretty much giving you the entire book. So that is find it in Google preview. Now moving on, how do you filter? You reopen each chapter. And you also have the filters here. You can download this entire book in a PDF, but you will have to download each chapter. The entire book cannot be downloaded in one go. It can be downloaded, but chapter wise. So here you are. And you can, of course, click on view PDF. If the lecturer says, Go to page 47 and you click on 47 the hard copy in the page number in the hard copy corresponds to the page number here so page 47 here see it takes you to page 47 so the lecturer might come to class and say all of you to open page 47 so if you type page 47 it will take you to that page then you have these options here you have print, you have save, and you have cite, which is our topic for the day. And then you have email. You can email this book to a friend. Of course, the book will not go. Only the link to the book will go to your friend. And you can share on social network. Now, when I talk about save, to save, you have to create an account here. Just like when you're shopping in Amazon, you create an account with your email ID and password. That's all you need to do. Once you've created your email ID and you click on save, it will be there in your saved items, which means you are reading this book and you think this is very interesting. But right now for your current research, this is not important. You will need it in your next project. So if you've created an account and saved it, you don't have to take the trouble of searching for this book again. That's the advantage of creating your account. 
it. It's like creating your own personal bookshelf. So now let's move on to our topic for the day, which is sight. Let's click on sight. So when you click on sight, it tells you preview citation as now Oxford supports these four APA, MLA, Chicago, and AM. You choose which one your university suggests and you can download that format. So let me just go back to our presentation. We've already discussed this. So let's move to our topic today, which is citations. What is a citation? A citation style is actually a set of rules which says this is how you can cite sources in academic writing. When you're referring to someone else's work, you need to give a citation. Otherwise, people will say you are cheating. It's called plagiarism. So if you have taken somebody's work, give that person credit by saying that this is taken from such and such source or the source of the information is this particular book. And these are the four most common styles of citations which we use. The, AM, the MLA, which is mostly used in literature, arts and humanities. The APA style, which is mostly used in psychology, education and other social sciences. Chicago, which is mostly used in notes and bibliography in history. AMA, which is mostly used in health sciences, including medicine and health. The citation style that you should use will be communicated to you by your professors. So let's start with the basics. What is a citation? A citation is a way that you tell your readers that this material in your work has come from somebody else. So how does it help? It helps the readers to understand the difference between what is your search and what is somebody else's research. And it also helps the readers to find information about the author, the title of the work, the name and location of the company, the date your copy was published, the page numbers of the material you are borrowing. And of course, journal citations will give you a little more. They will often have the volume, the issue numbers, as well as specific page references. So see, I am giving, I am telling you that I have taken this information from this site. This is the source. But of course, in, uh, when you're doing your projects, you will need to insert the citation. You know, uh, uh, recently at home, uh, somebody had sent us a link saying that the coronavirus was a planned event and planning was going on ever since 2012-13. And uh, somebody sent it to me and uh, I opened it and then there were so many links and there was so much around it to read and I was totally confused which from where this information has come from where that has come so that was of course a very scary article and I wouldn't want anyone to read it but let's just go with the belief that God is there but it just gives you a lot of information why do you need to cite when you are doing your research, you are actually do, looking up many different books, many different journals, because you want ideas, you want more information, you want proof that this has also been proved, said by so-and-so. So you cite because you're establishing credibility as an author. If you don't cite, you, would be, you will lose your credibility. People will say you're cheating. You have a habit of copying other people's work. So to establish credibility as an author, citation is extremely important. Also, it helps the readers to understand 
that this part of his research has come from here, but this is his own research. So that difference is visible and it puts an emphasis on the originality of your own work. It gives the readers a way to follow up and find more information on a topic. And it also points your readers to a resource. When do I need to cite? Whenever I borrow ideas, words, I need to acknowledge their resource. And which are the situations that all, always require a citation? Whenever you're using a quotation, you would say, as Shakespeare said, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. You're giving importance to Shakespeare. When you are paraphrasing, that means you are rewriting somebody else's work in your own language. The idea is still somebody else's. Just because you are paraphrasing, you are writing it in your own English, does not mean that you are not cheating. So even then you need to cite. When you are using an idea that somebody has already expressed, the idea is not yours. Somebody has already said it. So you need to give that person credit. Whenever you make specific reference to the work of another. And whenever someone else's work has been critical in developing your own ideas. So let's move on with the first style, which is MLA. Now, remember which style you should use will be communicated to you by your professors. Your professors will tell you whether you, you should use MLA or APA or AMA or Chicago. That your professor will tell you. And before I go on with this uh, MLA, let me just give you a heads up. There are two kinds of information. One is need to know, that is you must know it, and one is good to know. Right now, all this information is good to know. You don't need to mug it up. It's just having knowledge about it that is good to know. So I'm not going to go deeply into explaining this because you don't need to mug it up. There is a citation manager which will do all of this for you. So don't get confused. You'll say, oh God, this is so uh, in depth and what do I do? which is why I keep it as light as possible. So modern uh, MLA style currently is running in its eighth edition. It was developed by the Modern Language Association and is especially popular in language and lit literary studies. MLA uses parenthetical citations containing the author and page number. Uh, Subhash, you said you cannot see my screen. I think you'll have to log off and log back again if you can't see my screen. And those who, in any case, I will be sending you a link to the recording. So all of you will have access to this. Okay, can see. Subhash said that he could only see the screen. Uh, he, he can't see the screen. Okay, now he's able to see. Perfect. Thank you. So let's go to MLA. Parenthetical means in paragraphs. Now, this is what follows a template of nine core elements that provide all information about the source. And what are the nine core elements? the author, the title, the title of the container, that means the name of the book and the chapter. Other contributors, if there were other authors in it, which version of the book it is, number, who's the publisher, which date was it published, and the location. These are the nine core elements. So you see, this is an MLA style that I've taken. This is the name of the author, it's the name of the chapter, the book, and this is the chapter, separated by a colon. And then, because there are no other contributors, 
we move on to the publisher. It's giving the publication date here and the location. And whenever you cite, it will always give you this from where it has come from. You will always get this in your citation information that you've downloaded this information from here. So we'll just briefly touch upon the nine resources, nine core elements. I've told you author, title, container, other contributors, version, number, publisher, publication date, location. Now author. How is this important? Because you need to give reference to the name of the person who wrote this. And here the author's name comes first. How does it come? The last name first and the first name after that. So if it is Amartya Sen, it will be Sen Amartya. So here you see the first author is always last name, first name. So David Johnson is written as Johnson separated by a comma David. If there are two authors, then you have Johnson David separated by a comma. Again, you put a comma. And the name of the second author will be first name, last name, Valerie Smith. This is her first name. This is the last name. If there are three authors, then you just write the first name, author of the, uh, the name of the first author and you write et al. The author may not be a person. It could also be an organization. If it is like that, then you just use the name of the organization. But there is news. You actually don't need to do this manually. Your university, your library has a citation manager which will help you do this for you. Then comes title. You must include the full title of the source, that is the name of the book, including subtitles, that is the chapter separated by a colon and space. I've shown that to you. Use the title case, capitalize all words apart from conjunctions, prepositions, and articles. Conjunctions are words like and, between, but, something that separates two thought groups. Prepositions are to, on, in, under, into, and articles are a and the. So these kinds of words will not be in capital letters, but the other words will all begin with a capital letter. If there is no title, give a short description of the source with normal sentence capitalization. So just like in a normal sentence, you begin the sentence with a capital letter and then you write all the uh, words with a lower case. Unless, of course, you're writing the name of a place, person or thing, a noun that needs a capital letter. The styling of the title depends on the type of source. Italics when the source is self-contained, that is the whole book or website. Quotation marks when the source is a part of a large whole, that is, it is a chapter of a book. No styling when describing a source without a title. Now, you really don't need to mark this up. Just listen to it, that's it. You will get this recording to the session, so you can go through it. Don't confuse yourselves. Then we move on to container. Container is the larger work that your the source you're citing appears in. Maybe you are taking um, something from the complete works of Shakespeare. So how would it come? The complete works of Shakespeare, separated by a colon, then the name of the story, The Merchant of Venice, then again colon, and it would come as uh, Act 4, Scene 3. That's how it would come. If it is a part of a journal, it will have the volume number, volume 14, uh, issue number 6, page number 4445. The container is always italicized. It will always be in italics. A source can also have two containers. 
pay attention to the punctuation. The author and source titles end with a full stop. Again, you will not need to do this. It is the software that will do it for you. But you just need to know it. Elements within a container are separated by commas and a full stop is used to close the container. Then you have other contributors. How would you write the names of other contributors? This is how the names would come. They'd be separated by a comma and up to three authors. So the third author will have an and before it. If it has three or more contributors, just write the name of the first author, that is Ed Norris, et al. If there are no relevant contributors, leave out this element. Then we come to version. When there is more than one version of a source, you should include the version you used. If you are using the second edition of the book, please mention that. Then comes the number, like I told you, volume 68, number six, pages this. It is also possible for a source to have an addition, volume, and number. All you need to do is just separate them with commas. The good news is that you really don't have to do any of this manually. Unless you know it is just one or two citations that you have in your article. Because in an article, you will have 15, 20, 30 citations. So then you will need to use the software. But if it is one or two, this is how you would do it. Hence the need for this presentation. Then you come with the publisher, the seventh item. Book citations will have to have the public publisher element. Like it could be Oxford University Press, it could be Macmillan, it could be Cambridge University Press, whatever. You don't need to include a publisher for websites because you're giving the URL for journals, because journals always keep changing their publishers. They move from one publisher to another. For newspapers and magazines and platforms like JSTOR, JSTOR, EBSCO, etc. The last one, the second last one is publication dates. If it is available, always include the publication year. If you also know the date, put the date and the year. If you know the date and the time, say suppose it's an event, you're talking about a show, then you will also give the time. Or you're talking about a talk show, a TED talk, then you will mention the time it was presented. And if you're talking about a time range, then you will put it as from Jan 2017 to April 2018. If there is more than one publication date, use the one that was most relevant to your research and take the edition that you have used. If there is no publication date, then add the date you accessed that resource. It does have a publication date, but the date of access was also available. And the last one, location. What you include, include in the location element depends on the type of source you are citing. If it is a book chapter, the page range. If it is a web page, the URL will come. If it is a journal article, there will be a DOI. And if it is a live event, name and location and city. Any questions so far? Does anyone have any questions? 
you will not get a copy of the presentation usman but when you get the recording you will be able to see the uh, the slides as well so you will i will mail the links to you for the recording so you will get all of this on your own i hope that answers your question so no questions okay so well that brings us to um we've ended the first half of the session for newspaper well newspaper you is like a journal so it will just have the name of the journal the volume the article the volume page numbers so i'm it is uh, what is the time now in malaysia can anyone tell me the time in malaysia now time in malaysia i think it's 12:20 am i correct so i will see you at 12:30 your time go grab a glass of water take a bio break whatever 10 minutes break
Welcome back. Are all of you back? Just wanted to check if all of you are back from your break. Okay, very good. Thank you so much. So now we've done, we've discussed, uh, uh, let, let's do a little recap of what we've done so far. We spoke about um, Oxford Scholarship Online and uh, I told you about the differences between Oxford Scholarship Online and University Press Scholarship Online. And uh, then we moved on to citations, uh, the, the four kinds of citations that OUP supports. And from there, uh, we spoke about the first kind, which is MLA, which has nine core elements. We discussed the nine core elements. And I also told you why it is very important to cite, because if you're not citing, it, you will lose credibility as a researcher. So now we move on to the second one, which is APA. Which is American Psychological Association. Just as the name suggests, this was originally used in psychology and social sciences, this kind of citation style. But Today, there are many other disciplines that also use it. It is one of the most common formats because it's very simple. It's not as complicated as MLA with nine elements and so many rules. It uses an author date system and there are two parts. One is in-text citation and the other is reference style entry. So let me just show you what the difference between those two is. Let me just go to one of our journals page. How many of you have done my how to uh, publish with Oxford journals? Just opening any one uh, paper. latest issue. Let's open this research. Yeah. Now this is a journal article. Now in this journal article, do you see there is a little hyperlink here? There are so many hyperlinks here. One, two, what are these? These are citations. Where has this been taken from? This is the URL he's given. It tells you this is called in-text citation. That means within the text of the article, the citation is mentioned. See, two authors at all. This is the name of the source. The name of the article. Year, volume, pages. See, this is within the text. This has been given within the text. At the end of the article, when you go right down to the bottom, you will see these references. This is reference. These are the different references, the uh, articles I have referred to in my article. Got it? Now you know the difference between in-text citation and reference list entry. Reference list comes at the bottom of the article or at the bottom of the chapter even if you go to um, this if we go to this chapter 
or maybe I think at the end notes of the book it will come. Because usually book references come at the end of a book, not at the end of a chapter. No, here. You see? It's all here. These are all the different citation information. This is reference style. And in between, within the article, you see there are hyperlinks. These are in-text citations. So now have you understood the difference between in-text and reference? I see somebody. See, within the text, within um, the article or within the chapter, you will find a few hyperlinks. That is in-text citations. We, you will receive this recording. So take a look at the recording. Listen to it once. If you still have doubts, write to me on my personal ID. Here we are. So this is what the APA follows. And it requires four elements in every citation. It's a way to show the reader where the original idea came from and to give credit to the original author. Use one every time you quote or paraphrase a, road, a, a, a source. What are the four main elements? Who, when, what, where, the four W's. Very simple. Who's the author of the content? What was the date in which it was published? The name of the um, place from where you took the art article, the name and publication information. Who was the publisher? Or if it's a website or if it is a URL, whatever. That's it. It's as simple as this. A APA is very simple. Because I think people in medicine don't have so much time to go into so many details. This is an example. The four W's. Just You just need to remember this. Who are the authors? When it was published? What? And where has it come from? Oxford University Press. What are the rules for the author? If it is one author, you just put the last name. If it is two authors, you put both their last names, but you separate their names with an ampersand or with the word and. If there are three to five authors, all last names, separated by commas, the last author will have a, the ampersand or and written. Up to five authors, this is okay. The minute it becomes six, or more authors, the name of the first author's author at all. If you are using multiple sources in one citation, then you will just separate it with a semicolon. I've told you every source cited in the text, even if you've done an in-text citation, it should also appear in your reference list. You've seen how it comes in the reference list. I've shown it to you in both books and journals. And the book titles should always be in italics. This is how, if, it, if you're taking it from a journal, this is how it comes. You have the author, you have the year, you have the article title with the name, the name of the journal, which volume, the issue is in brackets, and the page numbers. Now see here they're asking you to remember formatting also, that uh, you must use Times Roman, all this, but you will actually not need to do all this. You have something that makes this life easy for you. So just take a read it. Nothing to remember in this. This is just something that you need to know. Or rather good to know. 
it's not really needing to know it let's move on to chicago book citation a chicago book citation follows two kinds of formats one is the footnote or the end note format which is the references that you saw in some articles instead of references you will see footnotes or end notes if you browse around you will see you'll find it like this or you will find bibliographies at the end of a chapter or at the end of a mostly bibliographies come you know when people write autobiographies so th these are the two different kinds of formats and the third one is full note or a short note let's talk about this in a footnote or an end note format you will put the author's first name last name name of the book place of publication publisher year page numbers so albert einstein taken from the book of uh, this meaning of relativity place of publication was princeton this is the name of the publisher princeton university press in which year 1923 page numbers 44 45 this is from where i have taken this information so i am mentioning this in my footnote and this is the first time i am mentioning this the second time again i have taken something from this particular book from meaning of relativity now second time third time many times i have taken it then what will i do i will just write the name of the author i write the name of the book and the page number that's it so every time i don't need to write all of this so five times if i've got page 97 page 105 that's all I need to write. In a bibliography format, the author's last name, first name, title of the book, place of publication, publisher, year. Very simple. Einstein Albert, in the inverse way his name comes. Meaning of relativity, published in Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1923. That's it if you are using it in the bibliography format now these formats will be communicated to you by your professors how they want you to do it so you'll have to you know check on these things with them the purpose of the session is so that you know the right kind of questions to ask your professor before you submit your work then we move to chicago author date format in an in-text form, you know, within the text, like I showed you, all you need is the author's last name, year, and page numbers. Einstein, this is the year the book was published, page 44, 45. If you are using it in the reference list, author's last name, first name, that means Einstein, Albert, which year, 1923, name of the book, the meaning of relativity. Princeton, Princeton University Press. In a journal citation, you'll have the author's first name, last name, name of the article, name of the journal, volume number, issue, month and year, page numbers, and DOI. So in the if it is a journal article citation at the end of the uh, the article this is how you write Morris Dixon name of the Dixon the name of the author separated with a comma the name of the article name of the journal question of Jewish books uh, book record uh, book awards the name of Princeton University Library Chronicle 63 volume number page numbers and if there is a DOI you will enter the DOI if every time from this particular article three four times you need to keep mentioning then you will just write the last name of the author a literature of one's own and the page number 
Chicago is extremely simple. Chicago, I think, is the easiest form. This is how it is linked to an article. And every time Chicago, if it is a journal, you will have to include the DOI. This is very clear. Last name, first name. This is the name of the journal's article. Then comes the name of the journal. Remember, this is, you don't give the name of the journal first. You first give the name of the article. Then you give the name of the journal in italics. Volume, issue number, which year, and the page numbers, the DOI. Then we move on to the last one, which is AMA. AMA is often used in medical sciences and uses a numeric system. It's as simple as that. This is how it looks. The page number in medical will always have to be there. Or it should have the URL. Now all of this, I'm sure all of you are very confused. I'm sure none of you remember half of what I said. Check the chat for page numbers in Chicago. I see sometimes author put P. P stands for page. Whoever's written, is there any attendance taken? Yes, the attendance is taken, but don't worry if you've missed it, you will still get a recording to the session. I will send it to you and you will receive your attendance certificate. Because you've joined. In fact, we started the session late. Some confusion. I'm really, really sorry about it. It's never happened to me. Anyway, so now you, I'm sure all of you are totally confused. Some of you must be thinking, why did I attend the session? There's so much detail. How will I remember? I need this PowerPoint. Now, all of this you cannot do manually. If you're going to Earlier, some 30 years ago, I remember a classmate of mine was doing her uh, sitting for a civil service examination and she would go to National Library and make notes. So 30 years ago, maybe when computers weren't so developed, not even 30, 40, 81, 82, I'm talking about. Then things were difficult. But now this technology, you have something called the citation manager who does this for you. Let's see what the citation manager does. The citation manager will collect the sources of information on your topic. And then what does it do? That it has collected from your sources, it will import it to a citation manager and upload it and attach it to your article or your book chapter. A citation manager is also called a reference manager and a bibliographic manager. It is a citation database that you build. Now, every time you're doing a research, you are writing. I've taken this from here. You're making a note constantly in a notebook or in a notepad. Taken from here, taken from here. But if you have a citation manager, it will automatically export it. This software is specially designed to make life easy for students, scholars, and writers. Because you know there are so many restrictions. You'll have to remember nine core elements. What were the nine? I forgot in the seventh one. Nothing. The software will do it for you. It will help you to store to search and organize your research. <coughs> it will help you to add notes, links, PDFs, and other file types. So every time you are doing a research on something else, 
you have your own library to go back to. Sometimes when you're doing your research and you think this is interesting and you click on it and cite it and keep it in your citation manager, that I will use it for my next one. So it is there for you. It makes work so much easier. You don't have to take the trouble of writing or copy pasting or wondering if it has happened like this or not. When should you use a citation manager? When you want to organize your research and easily create a bibliography? When you are writing a research paper with more than 15, 20 references? See, up to 10, you can remember and add them manually. But you know, when it becomes more than 10, so many references, even you get confused if it's a big paper. So then you definitely need someone to help you and that help, that person is the citation manager. When you want to keep your research in a subject area well organized and easily accessible, whether it is archived, later on you're going to go back to it, or whether it is a continuous process on your current research. And you can locate all your research in one convenient location. And then you can easily export citations from many of the library databases. So now let's just see, let's just go back here. When I click on site, when I click on site here, it says Chicago, I'm downloading. Now, I don't have any of these softwares. My company hasn't given me this. When I am downloading, I am getting this citation information. It's given me this. I can copy paste this and keep it. Now, I want to export the citation. This is something I can't do because I don't have the software. It's asking me to look for an app. So you definitely will have it in your library. This is how it appears. So you can keep on collecting your exporting citations and downloading your citations and making a list of it. So you have a list of all the citations that you have taken that you would want to use in your research. Now, there are many citation management softwares. You have BibTeX, you have Mendeley, you have EndNote, you have Zotero, you have Reference Manager, RefWorks, ProCite, you have, uh, you know, Cite you like. There are so many different kinds. Citavi. We in Oxford only support these three. ProSite, RefWorks, and Reference Manager. If your university does not have any of these, they have a Zotero, what will you do? You, you will not cite Oxford um, material, even if it is good, just because we, are not, we don't have Zotero. Then what you will do? You will click on .ris. What does dot .ris do? Dot .ris will take the information and put it the way it can be read by Zotero. If your library has Mendeley, dot .ris will take it and make sure that it can be read by Mendeley. It is a document which provides citation information in a format that can be read by other citation managers. So we have made it convenient for you to use. I've already told you this. So have you understood .ris? It makes your life easier. Now, on Citation Manager, which one does your uh, university use? You have to check with your librarian. 
she will tell you which citation manager is supported. If it is not any of these three, no need to worry. Continue using Oxford resources and use .ris. .ris will read the software that your library uses. Any questions, please ask. Uh, you don't need to be confused about bibliography and author date style. Bibliography is uh, when you put it at the end of it, but you are not doing it manually. It will automatically be read by the citation software. Yes, there will be a quiz. You will receive a link within one or two hours. Once the recording is down, you'll receive an email from me and you'll have to fill the quiz. Once you complete the quiz, you will, if you score 70% and above, you will be entitled to a certificate of completion. I cannot recommend, this is something you must check with the professors and your librarian. Does that answer your question, Nurul? See, again, it is, uh, Chiu, this is something that your librarian, your professors will decide whether you should use it or not. You must speak to your lecturer. I cannot tell you that you should do this or you shouldn't do that. Nurul's question was, uh, where did Nurul's question go? His question was, which reference manager application is best? Anything that I recommend? No, I don't really recommend anything. Whatever your professors recommend is what is best. You will be given a certificate of attendance. I think within 24 hours, you will receive it in your mailbox. But your certificate of completion will come only after the quiz. So the first certificate you will get because it's auto-generated. Can we do the citation list using only uh, word reference tools? Ask your professor if they allow you to do it. No, Vancouver style, if you're using, never mind, you use Vancouver. And when you're exporting it into, uh, which, check with your librarian, just use .ris. Yes, you will need to use .ris. Yes, you can download the article. Uh, you will receive a recording, uh, Marshita, and um, that will have all the slides as well. Any more questions? Thank you so much. And I'm really very sorry about the confusion with time. All of you, thank you so much for being so patient with me, for tolerating this. And have a good rest of the day and stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. And if you have any questions, please write to me at sumita.sen at oup.com. It's there on the slide.